Rapid Cargo sponsors the Kubi Springer Show. My name is Kubi Springer and I've come a long way. After 12 years of marketing, working for some of the biggest brands in the world, I've decided to bring my knowledge and expertise to you. to the Kubi Springer Show, sponsored by Rapid Cargo, the show that enables you to be your brand, shape your destiny, we show you how to own it. And coming up on today's show. We go behind the scenes for our weekly edition of Kubi Consults, our reality series where I consult established and emerging businesses about their business strategies. Then we are joined in the studio by Kimberly J, dancer, choreographer and Nike athlete who will talk to us about the business of dance and entertainment. Stay with us for our weekly surgery where we give you the chance to get your business ideas out in the open and taken to the next level in Brand Central. Then we view the latest elevator pitches online and choose the best ones in the running for this month's £100. <laughs> and if that's not enough, why not enter our weekly competition to see if you can win beauty and fashion products courtesy of cabinair.com. Remember, we'd love to hear from you, and there are numerous ways to get in touch. So simply text, tweet, Facebook us with your questions and your comments. All the information is on the screen now. First, today, a segment of the show which is brand new, we call it Kubi Consults, where I go and assist grown businesses with their business strategies. So why don't we just take a little look at what I got up to this week. Hi guys, I'm here today in the London offices for Sleek Hair. I'm sitting down with the very lovely head of marketing for Sleek. His name is Simon Beagle. Simon, thank you for taking the time out. Hello, Kobe. Yeah, you're very welcome. Oh, I know you've been very busy. That's true. And uh, I feel good that I'm sitting with you in the offices of Sleek. Let's go right to the beginning. When did Sleek start? Uh, Sleek started in 1989, uh, initially as a cosmetics company. And then in 1993, diversified into the ethnic hair market mm -hmm. and basically things have progressed ever since. And today you've moved and expanded globally, where, where are you now? Uh, we are now, we, we provide hair to 500 hair shops in the UK but uh, internationally it's over a thousand accounts. Mm. What's that like, being able to know that you started off quite a small company, I, I remember seeing the hair on East Street Market many years right. ago and now being able to say we're actually we've expanded and we're on all these markets. Well it's, uh, it, it's obviously a very nice position to be in and uh, my mother's very proud of me. <laughs> well good on mummy. So I mean you personally started at L'Oreal. That's good, well uh, before that yeah I was at Capital Hair and Beauty and then L'Oreal and now here at Sleek. And, and how have you found a transition? Um, it, it, cosmetics and hair have always been, I've always worked in the industry. Uh, the transition for marketing products to people is, is exactly the same process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that the brand very much, a lot of women at home will remember it for hair that is strictly for black women. Now however you can go in and see that you expanded into the European market. How did you get white women to recognize that this is a brand for them? Well, the, obviously the skill of weave and extensions is an ethnic skill. So the white girls would go into the, product, into the hair shops and buy the product and usually it was on a recommendation from one of their black friends. Right. So that's how it's established. We then decided to produce products specifically for the European market. Mm -hmm. We have a brand called Luxury. We have a, an EW brand, a European way, which is specifically really for white girls. Mm -hmm. When it comes to expanding and when it comes to growing the business, um, if you looked back on the journey that you've taken with Sleek, would there be anything slightly different you had done or are you quite pleased with where the brand is? No, we're very pleased with where the brand is. We are, our curls range is top. Fantastic, I yep. must say. Thank if you. I want a big throw, Yep. You guys are the ones I'm buying. Absolutely beautiful. Excellent. We are famous for our, our curl products. Uh, we are finding now that girls are going into the hair shops 
they're looking, they, they're going in and asking for what's the latest curl product uh, available from Sleek. Mm -hmm. And they're buying it blind. They, they're coming in and they are relying on us now where they know that we are dictating the fashion in curls. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly with our wigs as well. Our wig product is excellent. We are developing new products, full lace wigs. Uh, we're developing a range of synthetic wigs using tongueable fibre. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know that, uh, for me personally, as, as a black woman, I think that celebrity has driven the weave, the wigs market. You've obviously had Victoria Beckham unashamedly mm. saying, you know, I've got hair extensions in for the European market, and everybody from Beyonce to Alicia Dix, and you name it, they wear it. How important is celebrity endorsements for you guys? Um, it, is, it is important because obviously fashion is dictated through stage and screen mm -hmm. and through music and uh, we do get involved with a number of celebrities and provide hair for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know we can see the brands out and about. Last year, two years ago, you were at Mobo. We were, absolutely, and uh, last year, 2010, we were at the Urban Music Awards for sponsoring uh, the events there as well. I love the brand. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing, and thank you for taking some time out to Oh, talk you're to very, me. very welcome. Thank you for coming down Oh, today. you're welcome. So, you guys at home, if you want to learn more about Sleek, all the information is at the bottom of the screen. Personally, I love the curls. Go buy the curls. Big afros. Buy the curls. Mmm, exciting stuff, huh? Well, if you know that your business, or maybe somebody you know's business, could do with a marketing kickstart, then be sure to get in touch with us. The contact information is on the screen. Now, in the studio with me, I am so excited. I have today an established dancer, choreographer, and night athlete, Kimberly J. How are you, my Thank darling? Thank you, v. I'm good. Yes? Yes. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, I know you've just flown in from Ireland. Yes. Doing some good stuff out there. Yes. Now, let's get into this, because you've been in dance for over 10 years. Yeah. A good decade or yeah. so. Yeah. It's been a while. I've, I've been in dance now nearly 18 years, but professionally as a professional dancer for over, over 10 years now. Fantastic. And your Nike's brand ambassador and Nike athlete, what is that? Um, I'm actually a Nike women athlete. Basically, I started off in commercials for Nike just as a dancer. Um, I did one in 2005 called Take Sport, Add Music, and then one in 2006 um, called Tell Me I'm Not an Athlete. And this was broadcast across the EMEA region, so Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And it became a really powerful campaign, inspiring women to get involved, get more active, and get into sport. Um, I was obviously a, a plus-size dancer as well, so it was something nobody had ever seen before. Mm. And so I think Nike, off the back of that, realized I was pretty good at sort of communicating their brand and what they were about, and, you know, this whole idea that they were innovative and, um, you know, really about inspiring women women and so off that I became a contracted athlete I signed to them and have been signed to them now for five years. Wow I want to backtrack a little bit in terms of the actual advert I remember Kim when it first came out <laughs> and I was like go ahead with your bad self <laughs> yeah. it was a fantastic ad and you were literally a plus size dancer yes. I mean, what size were you at the time? I was a dress size 20. Was you really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, and you shrunk, minus the bubby. <laughs> <laughs> minus the bubby. And so now you're a paid, contracted Nike athlete. Yes. What does that entail? What do you do on a day to day basis for them? Um, on a day to day basis, it is. I mean, there's some marketing uh, involved in there. It's essentially being a, the face of the brand almost, communicating with people. The idea behind it is that we can inspire women specifically to get into sport and get more active. A lot of women these days think that sport isn't for them, getting sweaty, etc. It's really masculine and don't want to do that. And because of that, you know, a lot of women suffer not only physically in terms of their fitness, but also their, their inner strength and their, you know, their mental strength. And the idea is that we inspire women to get into sport so that they can benefit in terms of becoming stronger, becoming fitter, becoming harder, becoming faster, and then use that to go on and inspire others. It doesn't matter if they become athletes, it doesn't matter if they just do a session a week at the gym. As long as they feel better about themselves, that's what it's about. That's awesome. And what response have you had going from kind of a size dress 20 <laughs> to, I don't know what you are now, because you've got the bubbly going on now. <laughs> uh, five months, I understand, yes. right? Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so what, what comments do you get from women now? Um, there's been a mixed bag. A lot of women have been extremely supportive. Um, a lot of women think that it's changed me, um, or um, maybe assume that it's changed me so that, you know, just because, you know, I, I'm not as big as I used to be, I must be, you know, a completely different person. In actual fact, I'm exactly the same person. And as a dancer, I'm still plus size. Sure. Of you know? course, because dancers, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sticks. Exactly. You yeah. know, anything over a size 10 is plus size. Sure. So, you know, I'm currently a size 14, a very happy size 14, a very fit and healthy size 14. Um, so as I said, some women, you know, they, they find that inspiring, which I, I love, and mm -hmm. they, they do ask me sort of, how have you done it and what can I do, you know, to help me in terms of my fitness. Yeah. Other women 
women sort of sit back and say, well, she's sold out. She's part of the industry now. You right. know, she's the entertainment thing, you know, yes. has got to her. But it wasn't that at all, you know. And, and my inspiration for losing weight actually came from running. It didn't come from seeing a stick thin figure in a magazine. Of course, you know? of course. Now, now let's delve into the, the business of, of dance because you're a veteran. <laughs> I know that, you know, if you say Kimberly J, everybody knows you are a phenomenal uh, portfolio. Dance, obviously, with Nike, people like um, Madonna. I mean, you've been there, done it, worn the T-shirt. <laughs> How has the industry changed from when you started to where we are now? The industry has changed massively. Um, when I started, I think, when I started in 1991, very few people actually knew about street dance, especially here in the UK. It was very much an American thing. Mm. Um, and I started in a local community centre as a way to kind of just keep fit. You know, it wasn't anything I thought I could ever make a career out of. Now, um, due to things like reality TV, yep. so much money has been invested in dance. Yep. Got to dance. Got to dance, yep. you know. Britain's got talent. Britain's got talent. So you think you can dance. There are so many avenues now which have created so many opportunities for dancers. And not just dancers who train traditionally, but other dancers who maybe have come into it a little bit more unconventionally, like myself. Mm. You know, as I said, I came through the community route. I never went to dance school. Mm. Um, so television shows like that have given, you know, people the opportunity not just to dance and be seen, yep. but also for people to see them and know that just because you're a street dancer, it doesn't mean to say you wear a hoodie and run around like a, you know, a hoodlum, like a hoodlum. <laughs> creating trouble. Excellent. Yeah. Now, I have a, a very quick question because I know that you're doing something that's going to shift the industry quite drastically, and that's the Street Dance Standards Association. Yes. What, what is that in a few words, my darling? Um, the Street Dance Standards Association is a, a company that's it's been created to offer teacher training and guidance for street dance teachers. The aim is that we can we can reshape the industry by allowing qualified knowledgeable dance practitioners to pass on their art to the next generation and do so that's in a, in a way that's safe not only for the people who are training and studying but also for the culture as well so uh, you know as a whole it, it's it's a rounded opportunity for everybody great stuff Excellent. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break, and I know after the commercial break, you're going to have some great tips for people trying to get into the business of dance, right? Yes. So, you guys, if uh, you are interested in business tips, we've got Brand Central after the break. Right now, though, you're watching the Kubi Springer Show, sponsored by Rapid Cargo. I'll see you in a mo. Rapid Cargo sponsors the Kubi Springer Show.